This is the 51st and the last lecture of this class. And we are going to continue our discussion on OPM compensation, slew rate, and work out some problems, relevant problems. When I say last, there can be spontaneous expressions. Thank God it's over. Well, it's on, it can be on both sides for the student as well as the teacher. The first is the question of compensation. This requires to understand this phenomenon completely, it requires a knowledge of two quantities, two parameters used to describe a system, used to describe the potential instability of a system which is beyond the scope of this course. This will be taught to you in the control theory course, two parameters called phase margin and gain margin. Okay? And these two parameters basically can be explained qualitatively as if you have a feedback amplifier, you know the gain is A by 1 minus A beta. Okay? And if feedback is negative, then A beta would have a negative sign. If the feedback is positive, A beta has a positive sign. And the system, the feedback amplifier becomes unstable if A beta is equal to 1 or exceeds 1. Okay? A beta equal to 1 is the condition for instability, then it becomes an oscillator and it becomes a sinusoidal oscillator provided there is a frequency selective circuit in the amplifier. Okay? If it is LC, then you call it LC oscillator. If it is RC, then you call it RC oscillator. Now, in order to keep the system stable, we should ensure that A beta never reaches the value 1. Okay? This 1 is not simply 1, it is 1, 0 degree. Therefore, if in a system, in a feedback system, A beta can ever reach the magnitude unity, we should make sure that the phase does not reach 0 degree or 360 degree. Is that clear? We must, you see, both conditions have to be satisfied. One is that the magnitude should be 1 and the angle should be 0 or integral multiple of 2 pi. When A beta, if in a feedback system A beta can ever reach 1, we must make sure the phase is far away from 0 degrees. All right. Now, in a system, when A beta is equal to 1 or the gain magnitude passes the 0 line in dB, okay, 20 log 10 of magnitude A beta, it crosses the 0 dB line, we must make sure that at that point the phase is far away from 0 degree. Suppose the phase is, let us say, minus 30 degrees, then you have what is called a phase margin of 30 degrees. Is the point clear? There is a margin of 30 degrees, like a margin of a full scale paper. You do not write on this, you keep a margin, if necessary, you can come over here. If necessary, you can make it unstable by allowing the phase to go there. But it is a measure of how safe, how stable the amplifier is. If the phase is, let us say, minus 90 degrees, well, we are safer. We say phase margin is larger. In a similar manner... Excuse me, sir? Yes. Sir, is the zero degree precisely defined? I mean, if I have a phase of one degree... Yes. If it is one degree, then it is stable. It has to be... Well, it depends on the magnitude. Magnitude can be greater than one. That is good because there is more positive feedback, more oscillations, more unstable. But the phase, phase has to be exactly zero degree. Okay? There can be a safe margin because of instability. There are noise margins. Noise always makes, uh, contributes to frequencies which can have a phase uh, close to zero but not exactly zero. Okay? 
it's a hazy picture at that point. But if you want to make a stable amplifier, the op amp, you know, is always used to feedback. And therefore, one has to make sure that it always remains stable. Now, the other quantity is the gain margin. It says that if the phase ever reaches zero degree, then you must make sure that the gain magnitude, A beta magnitude, is far away from 1. Okay? The magnitude is to be less than 1. Okay, it cannot be greater than 1 because greater than 1 still satisfies the conditions of instability. Okay, so suppose the gain at the point at which the phase is 0 degrees is half, we say the phase, the gain margin is half. Is the point clear? If it is 0.1, then we say the gain margin is 0.9. These are qualitatively the concepts, quantitative definitions and their uses in the design of control systems will be talked about in the course on control. In an op amp, in an op amp, as you know, there are many transistors and therefore many poles and a high frequency 3 dB point will be a contributed effect of all these poles. To make it absolutely stable, what we do is we create a dominant pole and the dominant pole is to be at a sufficiently low frequency so that if I plot a j omega magnitude versus omega, we create a 3 dB point in the open loop case at a sufficiently low frequency omega L of the order of 10 hertz. So that at higher frequencies where the high frequency poles occur, the gain is sufficiently low so that a beta can never reach the value unity. It is done intentionally, otherwise you have problems. You have problems of instability. What you consider an inverting amplifier can become unstable because of the phase condition. Okay? And this is done intentionally by a very simple technique. One of the simplest techniques is, as you know, we have the first stage as a differential amplifier which is basically a transconductance amplifier and this stage takes it to a gain stage which is basically a CC CE combination, CC CE combination and what is done is to create a dominant pole, what is done is a capacitor C is connected between the input and output. It can be done either internally and internally it can be a fixed capacitor or it can be custom made. Suppose a particular company says I want 1 million op amps with a dominant pole at let's say 10.35 hertz. Then the company to which it orders will make an op amp choose a value of C. Or it can also be augmented from outside. An op amp, if you take a chip, there are two terminals. These are called compensating terminals and you can connect a capacitor of your choice to make the dominant pole at any frequency that you want. As I said, omega L is much less, I should not call it omega L, I should call it omega H, right? Omega H is much less than omega H I's due to the internal capacitances of the transistors. So that this pole is the dominant pole <coughs> and the op amp gain A of S can be written approximately as a 0, that is the open loop gain DC value divided by 1 plus S divided by let us say omega 0. Let us call this omega 0. So, what do you mean by dominant pole in the physical terms? Dominant means that the effect of the other poles is negligible. Effect of the other poles, in general, the op amp transfer function will be the form 1 plus S by omega naught then 1 plus s by omega 1, etc., etc. In general, this would be the situation. If omega 0 is much less than omega 1, omega 2, and so on, you know the high frequency 3 dB point is basically determined by omega 0. And the ratio required is 1 is to 3, 3.3 approximately. Okay? So this is why it is called a <coughs> dominant pole. This dominates the picture. And it makes sure that any other corner frequency, any other pole frequency, the gain is sufficiently low so that A beta can never, never reach unity. This makes the 
uh, op amp absolutely stable. Whatever connections you make, it is done intentionally. It is opposite to our concept of white banding. White banding in an op amp is not a problem because you always use the op amp with a feedback. All right, and feedback reduces the gain. Our open loop gain is of the order of 10 to the 6. 10 to the 6 gain we never require in practice. Okay, we require gains of the order of 100, 200, and so on. So omega 0 multiplied by the gain. No. Omega 0, A 0, omega 0. If your if the gain that you want is A T, then the effective omega 0 prime would be this divided by A T. The gain bandwidth product remains a constant and therefore the bandwidth can be expanded to any value that you want subject to of course the highest pole frequency the highest pole frequency that is you cannot go beyond let us say 1 plus s by omega n if omega n is the highest pole frequency you cannot go beyond because then the uh, things will uh, take care of themselves and the gain would be reduced to a very small value at that point. So you understand what is a dominant pole the dominant pole and this process is called compensation. This is compensation for instability, compensation for instability. So a uh, usual op amp 741 or any other that you see can always be described by A of S equal to A0 by 1 plus S by omega 0 and the compensating terminals in an op amp chip if you connect another capacitor there, small capacitor, this omega 0 can be adjusted to any value that you like. Okay? Now this leads us to the large signal operation of an amplifier. The, if the dominant pole has a very uh, uh, statutory effect on the large signal operation of an op amp. As I had commented earlier, if you apply a large signal to the input terminals of an op amp there is a limit up to which the output can go as you know in a different exactly like a differential amplifier well the output voltage will saturate at some value ideally the value is vcc minus vce set ideally but since curvature starts even before that a few volts is left out if this limit is let us say 15, then a typical limit up to which one can go is 12, okay, plus minus 12. For example, <coughs> this plus minus 12, we had given a name. It was called the output voltage range, output voltage range. For example, if you make an inverting amplifier with let us say gain of 200, inverting amplifier with a gain of 200 and the output voltage range is plus minus 12 all right output voltage range is plus minus 12 then what is the highest uh, amplitude of a sinusoid which you can apply at the input to get the maximum possible output it's very simple plus minus 12 divided by 200 which is uh, plus minus 0 0.06 so peak to peak should be 0.12 this this you can estimate the output voltage range will be specified by the manufacturer this will be specified and when you apply an input signal for a particular gain you should take care that you don't apply more than plus minus 0 0.06 because then you will get distortion now distortion cannot always be judged in a CRO because your eye is a very deceptive equipment. The eye basically is an integrator and what an integrator does is it, uh, it fails to see the finer variations. It sort of smooths out and therefore one should very religiously stick to the specifications and calculate what is the maximum input that you can apply. Now this, <coughs> the large signal operation this is one caution that has to be exercised. The other is the so-called phenomenon of slewing, S-L-E-W-I-N-G, slewing. To understand slewing, let us take a very simple example. Let us take a unity gain amplifier. As you know, an unity gain amplifier, the input is applied here and there is 100 percent negative feedback. Okay? 
This is the simplest uh, possible op amp application. Now, <coughs> of course, you know that instead of a short circuit, I could apply, I could use a resistance here without any problem. I could use a resistance here. And if I use a resistance here, then I have to use a resistance here also to take care of offset. Those are finer considerations and you must do that as a religious matter. You must not try to fabricate an op amp circuit as is given in the textbook. You do that, but you also take care of offset. Now, let us apply to this input a VIT, a VIT, which is a step, which is a step voltage. Let us say capital V U of T. The input is a step, okay, at T equal to 0, occurring at T equal to 0, and the magnitude is V. What do you think? All right. Let us find out the output voltage V0 T under ideal conditions. Okay. You know the gain of the amplifier is a dominant pole 1 S0 divided by 1 plus S by omega 0 and the gain of the op amp under unity gain condition under unity gain connection is not exactly unity. It is A0 divided by A0 plus 1. Okay? If you analyze this, if you analyze this, the gain at the mid band would be A0 divided by A0 plus 1. The actual gain would be A of S divided by A of S plus 1. Does this surprise you? Yes or no? How do you get this? How do you get this? It's very simple. Okay, let us get this. This is Vi and this is V0, this is V0. Now, I am taking the uh, phasor quantities. Okay, So, this is minus plus Vi minus V0 multiplied by A is equal to V0 and therefore, V0 by Vi is A by A plus 1. Okay. Now, if that is so, obviously the gain of the op amp would be A0 divided by 1 plus S by omega 0 divided by 1 plus A0 divided by 1 plus S by omega 0, which you can write as A0 divided by 1 plus A0 plus S divided by omega 0. All right. That is since the gain is approximately unity, the bandwidth should be approximately A0 times omega 0. You can write this as A0 by 1 plus A0, 1 divided by 1 plus S divided by omega 0, 1 plus A0. Okay? And therefore, the bandwidth has been extended to approximately the GBW product. I can write this as A0 divided by 1 plus A0 which is approximately equal to 1 multiplied by 1 by 1 plus S by let us say omega L, the closed loop bandwidth. Omega L is equal to omega 0, 1 plus A0. Now, if I apply a step of amplitude V, what would be the transform of the output voltage? This will be multiplied by this is the transfer function, it will be multiplied by V by S. All right? And if you take the inverse Laplace transform, it is not difficult to see that my output V0 T shall be equal to capital V 1 minus, it is a low pass circuit e to the power minus T by tau, where tau is equal to, what is tau? relationship of tau to omega L, 1 by omega L, that is correct, which predicts that the output voltage shall rise exponentially. Okay? If I plot the output voltage, the input is this, the output should rise exponentially like this and go ultimately to V unity gain amplifier. So, ultimately it should go to V after a long time. What is the initial rate of rise? This is V0 T versus T. 
initial rate of rise? Not 1 by V by tau. Okay, V by tau. All right. It turns out that in practice, this is not the case. In practice, what happens is the output voltage, if capital V is large, the if capital V is small, very small step, a microvolt or a millivolt step, yes, the rise will be exponential. But if capital T is a few volts, let's say, large voltage, then it turns out that the output rises linearly. Okay? And this, when this happens, we say the op amp is slewing. Okay? The is op amp, pardon me? If capital V is sufficiently large, then the output does not, does not rise exponentially, it rises linearly at a much lower rate. Okay? And when this happens, we say slewing is taking place. The op amp is showing slewing effect or slew effect. And the slew rate is defined as the maximum rate at which this output rises. Okay? That is d v0 dt max under large <coughs> signal conditions. Under large signal conditions. The reason why slewing occurs <coughs> is not difficult to understand if you recall that the op amp, how the op amp has been compensated. We have two stages. One is a transconductance stage and the output is given to a gain stage with a capacitor between input and output. Okay? When the input voltage is large, the output current, as you know, in a differential amplifier, for example, the output current saturates. Output current saturates like this. To what value? If it is a differential amplifier with a current source, biasing I, E, E, okay? Goes to either plus I, E or minus I, E. Let's call this in a general differential amplifier, in a general op amp where there may be several stages of differential amplifier. Let's call this I max and minus I max, okay? Obviously, <coughs> I max, what will be the relation between G M V i d and i max. If V i d is large, then and the current saturates, obviously i max is less than or equal to G m V i d. Agreed? Okay. So what happens is in the in the unity gain amplifier, let's draw it again, minus plus, this is the input and the output is taken here, V i V 0. In the unity gain amplifier, when the input step is applied, step of amplitude capital V, the output cannot rise in instantaneously, if at all, it has to rise either exponentially or linearly. We will see why linearly. But the output at time t equal to 0 is equal to 0. Correct? If this is 0, then obviously this is also 0. Therefore, the whole step is applied between this point and this point. V i d at t equal to 0 is a large voltage capital V. And what happens to G m is it saturates. It, the current output saturates at I max and the current cannot vary. This current, this current, you see the step then remains like this. So, this current then charges this capacitor. A constant current charging a capacitor gives rise to a voltage which is linear with respect to time and that is why this new effect comes into operation. And this is purely because of the dominant pole. The dominant pole is a necessity, is a necessity for making the op amp stable and one of the evils that accompanies this is that the output cannot rise exponentially, it rises linearly. Okay? So, the slew rate SR is obviously equal to I max divided by C. Is that clear? 
the rate at which the voltage rises will be simply I max by C and it would be less than V by tau which is the initial rate of rise of the exponential voltage of the exponential rise. This is basically the reason for slew rate and slew rate is something which one has to be one has to take care if one applies an op amp for a large signal operation. <coughs> will work out a few examples to illustrate this. Is there any question at this point? No. <coughs> Since we are not working any, um, any tutorial sheet on this, let me give you a couple of examples to solve before I, I take some examples on slew rate. There is an interesting example on a differential amplifier offset calculation. Please take it down. A difference amplifier. This is V0 and you know a difference amplifier is like this. Uh, this is V1 and this is V2. I don't know, I have uh, interchanged the terminals. Normally, small v0 should be proportional to v2 minus v1 and the gain will be determined by these resistances. These resistances are usually proportioned like this. These two are equal and these two are equal. R1 and R3 are equal and R2 and R4 are equal. Then v0 would be 1 plus R2 by R1 multiplied by V2 minus V1 or V1 minus V2. That, that will be a sign change. Now, the problem says R1 is equal to R3 is equal to 10K and R2 equal to R4 equal to 1 meg. So, there would be a gain of 100? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. That would be a gain of 100. So, V0 would be 100 multiplied by V2 minus V2. V2. V1 minus V2. That is correct. You must take care of this sign. 100 multiplied by V1 minus V2 or minus 100 multiplied by V2 minus V1. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the question says that all kinds of offsets are present. The offset voltage is 3 millivolt. The base, the bias current, the bias currents are not equal, but you know what is a bias current for a tran for a op amp. It is the average of the 2, IB1 plus IB2 by 2. This is given as 0.2 microamps and the offset current is given as 50 nanoamperes. So, IB2 minus IB1 or IB1 minus IB2 is 50 nanoamperes. Okay. Your, uh, the problem is to find out the worst case DC offset voltage at output. The worst case, and my, I would not solve this. My uh, calculation shows that the result is uh, 353 millivolt. This is the answer. If you get the answer, you know how to calculate. Then you know how to calculate. I said worst case. That means you did not take care of signs. You take that all of them are conspiring to produce a, to, to add up to a, an output voltage which is the worst case. Now, a problem on slew rate. <coughs> For an op amp having a slew rate, typical slew rates are 10 volt per microsecond. Slew rate is the rate at which voltage rises, so its dimension is voltage per second. Okay? 10 volt per microsecond, this is the op amp slew rate. And the op amp is connected in the unity gain connection, unity gain configuration, UGC. Okay. <coughs> the input pulse rises from 0 to 5 volt. It is a pulse, not a step. What is the difference between a pulse and a step? Pulse is a difference between two steps, right? It is a staircase. Okay then you must come down. It is a pulse. 
the pulse rises from 0 to 5 volt. The amplitude is 5 volt, then it stays for, for a while and then comes down, comes down uh, identically, I mean ideally to 0. The question is what is the shortest pulse? What is the shortest pulse that can be used while ensuring full amplitude output? What is the shortest pulse that can be applied, that can be used while ensuring full amplitude output? What is the full amplitude output? Five volt. Because it's a unity gain connection. You must, if it was an, if it was a non-inverting uh, gain stage, for example, of gain 10, then you would have divided by, you would have multiplied by 10, okay? But then you must make sure that that doesn't exceed the output voltage range. We might give, <laughs> there might be a problem in which the VCC is specified to be 15 volt and you multiply it by 100 and it becomes 500 volt, okay? Obviously, that cannot be obtained. Here, it's a unity gain connection, so the maximum output is 5 volt. And what we are required to do is to find this tau for which the full amplitude output is obtained. Obviously, and the second part of the question says, for such a pulse, sketch the resulting output. Okay? Obviously, obviously what, we, what we expect is that during the duration of the pulse, well, the <coughs> voltage will rise and this slew rate rise to this value. If it reaches earlier, then obviously it will have to stay constant for a while. Okay? So, and the maximum rate of rise is 10 volt per, mic per microsecond. So, what is tau? 0. 0.5 microsecond. And what would be the resulting output? Is this the output? Will it stay like this? No, it must come down symmetrically it cannot come down exponentially because again the discharging is in, in, in a linear manner okay so it will come down like this once slewing has started no exponentiation it's all linear so this is the output shape of the output pulse second problem <coughs> reverse current might not be such there is no other way the capacitor has to discharge and the uh, transistor will maintain its current constant okay the second problem <coughs> is the following. For an amplifier with a slew rate, same, 10 volt per microsecond. This is a typical value for 741. What is the, you see this question is slightly twisted. What is the highest frequency at which you are required to find out the highest frequency at which 20 volt peak to peak sine wave can be produced at the output? 20 volt peak to peak sine wave output can be produced at the at the output. Sine wave can be produced at the output. Is the point clear? 20 volt peak to peak, that means the maximum amplitude can be 10. Okay. Why does it depend on frequency? Because frequency determines the rate of rise for a sine wave the rate of rise is determined by the frequency. If it's a higher frequency, it will come down like this. And this rate of rise cannot be accepted, cannot be handled by an op-amp. If the frequency is sufficiently high, you will see that it, it rises like this in a linear manner and it produces a triangular wave instead of a sine wave. Okay? Of course, it is used for sine to triangle converter. That's another use. Using this slew rate, you can convert a sine wave to a triangular wave at high frequencies. At high frequencies. Yes. Now, <clears throat> so the question is, what is the highest frequency at which a 20 volt peak to peak sine wave can be produced subject to this slew rate? Obviously, the solution of the problem is very simple. V0T obviously is 10 sine of omega t. 20 volt peak to peak means 10 volt amplitude. Okay. And therefore, dv 0 dt is 10 omega cosine omega t and the maximum value of this dv0 dt max is equal to 10 omega and that is given as 10 volt per microsecond and therefore omega is equal to 
Perfect. One megahertz. Is that correct? No. <coughs> one by two pi megahertz. That is correct. All right. That uh, is approximately how much? Hundred and fifty-nine kilohertz. Okay. Uh, try to work out uh, a few examples from any of the books, any of the books that I mentioned. Every book treats offset. These are simple problems, but one has to understand. This formally brings us to the close of this lecture and this course. I have another few minutes. I want to spend on a message. Abraham Lincoln. Who was Abraham Lincoln? A president of the United States. Abraham Lincoln, when he sent his son to school, he wrote a letter to the headmaster of the school. And he, uh, he uh, made some requests to the headmaster to teach some principles to his son. That letter is a classic letter. If you have not seen it, um, you cannot see it now because I have made an adaptation from that. And that is the message that I want to pass to you. A copy of this will be available um, after the class you can pick up. But I want to read this to you and I want you to listen to it. <coughs> this is from a teacher to his students. This is the adaptation. <coughs> you of course know that all men are not just and that all men are not true. But also remember that for every scoundrel there is a hero that for every selfish politician there is a dedicated leader. How true. <coughs> Remember that for every enemy there is a friend. Remember that a rupee earned is of far more value than five found. You must learn to lose and also enjoy winning. Steer yourself away from envy if you can. It's not, it's not simple, if you can. Learn the secret of quiet laughter. I cannot explain this phrase to you. It has to come from within. Learn the secret of quiet laughter. And once you learn it, you will enjoy it. I can assure you. Appreciate the wonder of books, textbooks for example, but also have quiet time to ponder the eternal mystery of birds in the sky, bees in the sun, and flowers on a green hillside, if you have time to observe. Remember that it is far more honorable to fail than to cheat. It's true for all classes. Have faith in your own ideas, even if everyone tells you, including your teacher, that they are wrong. Have faith in your ideas. Ankur stood tough on the face of a challenge and he won. His, his answer was correct. You remember that challenge? Yes, sir. Yes. I appreciate that. I hope Ankur will stay like this throughout his life and he will instill others to stay like this. Be gentle with gentle people. This is important. And tough with the tough. Okay? Don't yield. Try not to follow the crowd when everyone is getting on the bandwagon because everyone in the class is applying abroad for a scholarship. That's no reason why you should also. Listen to all men, but also filter, as particularly after <laughs> learning so much of filtering in this class, you should be able to filter all you hear with a screen of truth and take only the good that comes through. Try to laugh when you are sad. Again, I cannot explain this to you. It's only spontaneous. It has to come from within. You have to try. Try to laugh when you are sad. Be assured that there is no shame in tears. If tears come, let them go. Let them flow. Don't stop them. There is no shame in tears. Close your ears to a howling mob and stand and fight if you think you are right, for a right cause. Expect to be treated gently 
IIT boys after graduation have lot of expectation from the outside world. This is very important in that context. Expect to be treated gently, but do not allow yourself to be cuddled because only the test of fire makes fine steel. Only the test of fire makes fine steel. Have the courage to be impatient, but also have the patience to be brave. Have sublime faith in your Creator. If you are an atheist, ignore this. Have sublime faith in your Creator and faith in yourself too, because then you will always have faith in mankind. This is a big order, I know. But please see what you can do. Thank you.